Today I'm with Ashley. Ashley, you reached out to me recently on social media and you wanted to share your son's story. Please share that story with us. Um, so this is my son, Elijah. A lot of people know him as Reese. That was his nickname. Um, he was found deceased in his bed on Mother's Day of 2020. Um, he was looking for a Percocet pill and one of his so-called friends who he's known since junior high school, who I know, who knows me very well, who's even been given rides in my car before and um, just been around me and my son since my son was probably 12 years old, uh, sold him uh, a fentanyl pill and it wasn't even Percocet. It had no Percocet in it. It was pure fentanyl. Um, my son was not looking for that. He never would have done anything that would hurt me with the way that I am hurting. And um, definitely wouldn't have wanted to take his life. Um, so, <clears throat> he was found in his bed on Mother's Day. Um, I got a knock on my door from two close friends of mine as I was gonna be getting up getting ready to go and have breakfast with my son for Mother's Day and do all of those things that parents mothers do with their kids on Mother's Day <clears throat> instead I was driving to Buckeye screaming and crying in the car um, my world just started spinning and I fell to the ground and just just didn't know what to do um, and they wouldn't even let me touch him because he had blue powder on his face and that's what I got to do for Mother's Day that was the last Mother's Day I saw my son alive well he wasn't alive but the last time I could see him um, there was no thorough investigation the police did not show hardly any interest in the case with all of the um i mean it was clear that something had happened at that apartment that day there were other people there um and it was said that he had been there from the medical examiner's office that he was there for a day before it was reported that he was deceased um so his roommate was there with him and she said that she didn't know that he was in his bed deceased for 24 hours. Meanwhile, his car is outside. You guys had plans that day to go somewhere and out of all days, you don't check on him that one day. Doesn't make sense. So they were never questioned. The police did not care. They wrote my son off as he was like he was a drug addict which he was not my son was hard working he um i even got calls from his supervisors when he passed away telling me how good of a worker he was how well of a job i did raising him how polite and respectful he was how hard working he was and he was only 19 years old and he had his own car he had an apartment he was very respectful um loved taking care of his mom and just was not not a drug addict um there's a stigma that you know people that die from fentanyl poisoning are drug addicts and it's not true it's one time you could be um at a party with friends and you take a pill never tried drugs before one time and you're dead um and i feel like even if you are a drug addict that still does not give the right for somebody to take your life you still have a heart you still have a family and they don't care so um they didn't even really touch anything on the investigation they just basically to me it was like a report just to um just for their books i requested a copy of the report and did my own investigation and requested a change in detectives because nothing was being done.
I ended up with the sergeant of the department. He was not really too interested either. Um, they were telling, kept telling me that he had other cases and that he was investigating shootings and all of that stuff. And I just, it was an awe because so, because my son took a fentanyl pill, he's not as important as these other people. And he didn't know that it was fentanyl. And even if he did, that still doesn't, that's still not right. Um, so I was patient with them. I gave them pr enough time to do their investigation. And I told myself if they didn't have an answer for me within a certain amount of time that I was gonna take it into my own hands. And that's exactly what I did. And I told them that, um, you know, I had more information than they did. I did my own investigation. When it's your child, you will do whatever you have to do to protect them and to give them the justice that they deserved. And um, that's what I did. And um, they finally submitted charges on the person who sold my son the pill. And they're charging him with distribution of narcotics, which to me is ridiculous um, because that's murder. You know that you're selling somebody something that could take their life and you did it anyway. So to me, that's murder. I call it drug-induced homicide. And um, I'm gonna do everything in my power to make sure that he gets more than that. Um, I started a nonprofit organization called the Elijah Harris Foundation. And um, I'm gonna be doing a lot of community outreach and education and hopefully be able to visit juveniles and jails and places where there's a bunch of children and just try to get the word out there and try to help as much as I can. And also um, starting a petition to charge these dealers with murder when it results in a death. And um, I'm gonna be organizing a protest as well at the Arizona State Capitol so they can change the law. <clears throat> Ashley, my condolences for your loss. Uh, that takes a lot of courage for you to first off share your story. But like you said, you, you started doing your own investigation, right? Mm -hmm. You went through his phone. I did. Where is this coming from? I right? Did. Who I was this person? I broke into his phone. I, he had an iPhone, so it's very hard to get into those phones. And it took me a lot, uh, some time. But I wasn't giving up. And that's what I urge other parents out there that have gone through the same thing as me. Um, don't just sit back and allow this to happen. If there's enough parents that can come forward and, and fight this fight with me and everybody else, then maybe we can change something, but your child deserves justice and they deserve you to do everything in your power to give them the justice that they deserve. What type of advice would you give parents out there? So you mentioned your son, Elijah, really good kid, mm -hmm. working, hard worker, right? His supervisors tell him great yeah. work ethic, good kid, well-mannered. So what about other parents that they think, oh, not my kid, not my son. My son is well-mannered. They're doing good. My son would never do that. My yeah. child would never do that. What advice do you have for parents? Some or Any type of signs that you might have missed or just... You know, what type of advice would you give parents to look for or to reach out to their children about? Um, I would definitely say to not um, just pay attention. I, I never thought that my son would be taking pills. Um, so I wasn't really looking for things like that, but I did overlook some things which mainly was just fatigue. The times that I would be around him, he would be extremely tired. And I thought it was just due to the fact that he was working overtime. I mean, he was even working on the weekends. He would work seven days a week sometimes. Um, so that's what I thought it was. Um, I would pay attention to the changes in their attitudes, um, the group of friends that they hang around with, interrogate their friends if you need to. Um, because nowadays, you don't know who's doing what and one child could be out here with no guidance and you don't know what's going on in that child's home or what he's going through and it's gonna eventually make its way to your child so pay attention to their friends 
um, the people they hang around, just changes in their behavior, changes in their attitudes. Um, a lot of the times I know that people that are using drugs can become more aggressive. Um, fatigue is definitely one of the signs for sure. And I wish I would have thought into it a little bit more because maybe I could have done something, but um, that was one of the signs that I ignored. And um, that's mainly, those are mainly the signs that I, that I noticed. And just, even if, even if they get upset with you because you're badgering them or interrogating them, it doesn't matter. You're their parent. That's your job. And they can be mad. They would rather be alive. And you would rather have them here instead of living and feeling the way that I feel. <clears throat> we were talking earlier, Ashley, and uh, you mentioned that you watch, you know, some of the videos, you know, mm -hmm. that I have on YouTube, right? Some of the videos on the on the channel. And and uh, you're, you asked me if do any of the kids any of the people that I talk to, do they call me to take them to, you know, to treatment? Mm -hmm. And I told you uh, two weeks ago, a young man, 21 years old, Jay, he did. He asked me to take him to treatment. I dropped him off at treatment. He's mm -hmm. currently in treatment right now. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I, I wish I could have ran in to Elijah, mm -hmm. me too. you know, and then have a conversation with him, you know, but again, he wasn't out in the streets. No. He's like a normal kid working seven days a week, busting his butt to pay for his uh, apartment, for his car. Right? Yeah. So sometimes it doesn't get to that point out no, in the streets. And he didn't, you know, he didn't. I don't know if he, like, if this was something that he just had recently started doing or if this was, I don't know, because he's not here for me to ask him. But a lot of the times, kids are not going to ask you for help. They're not going to tell you what's going on. They're not. And then by the time you find out, it's too late. But no, he wasn't. He wasn't outside on the corners. He wasn't one of those people that you see at the bus stops. Nothing like that. And that's the stigma. They assume that all of these people that are using fentanyl are homeless, drug addicts, nobodies, people that don't mean anything to anybody. And that's not true. This is a good reality check for all the parents out there who have their kids at home, 15, any age, 15, 60, you know, just talk to them. Have a conversation today. 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 I would not wait. Show them the video. Show them whatever you need to show them. Um, do whatever you can because this is the worst thing that you could ever go through in life. And if I can help somebody from having to feel the way I feel, I would be more than happy to do that. And I think that's uh, your main purpose in life now is honoring his uh, memory by trying to save others, right? Yeah. And so I applaud your courage for doing that. It's Thank not you. easy, right? Because every day you're gonna you live with it, right? The memory and 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 the realization that your 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 boy, you know, he he just made a mistake. One simple mistake that he didn't know would take his life, and. There's no second chances. There's no go backs. You don't get to redo anything. You're gone. Your life is gone. You're oh, it's it's over, just like that. You don't get a chance to rethink anything. Once you make that decision to take that pill, however you take it, that's it. You don't know. Every single time you use that drug, you're taking a huge, huge risk at losing your life. It's now one in every. Um, Gosh, I think now every five minutes, somebody overdoses on fentanyl. And that's, that's a I lot. think last year was every eight minutes. The year before that was every 10 minutes. And now it's every five minutes. That's too much. Too many young people that have, could be somebody special. You know, people are ordering it off of Snapchat. Um, it's just... And the dealers don't care. They they don't care. All they want is money, you know? Those pills cost $3. My son lost his life for a $3 pill. Ashley, um, 
you're now working on a nonprofit foundation for your son. You are petitioning to change the law, mm-hmm. right? Reform yeah. to start charging dealers uh, murder. with murder mm-hmm. if the sale of drugs results in the death. Absolutely. So that's again, that's commendable. Thank you. I appreciate your courage, and I'll stand right right next to you. Okay, you. Uh, in your in your uh, journey to have some accountability for these people right yeah. uh that are out here you know corrupting our youth uh destroying our young people uh there needs to be accountability and there it starts does. with you it starts with me it starts with people that are going to watch this right and and in every community not just here locally in the valley in phoenix mesa uh arizona but it because it's everywhere it, it really everywhere. is it's really it's i don't know i mean everywhere you look now it seems like people are just on drugs it's i i'm sad to even imagine what this world is going to be like in 10 years it's terrible and um you know as far as accountability that's part of the reason i mean people aren't gonna people like that that don't have any compassion for human life they don't care if they kill somebody they don't care if they hurt somebody they don't care if they destroy families they don't care um but at least if they know that there is, they're gonna be held accountable. They're gonna be charged with something more harsh than distribution of narcotics or whatever. Sometimes in, in a lot of cases, no charges at all. Um, even though they have proof that the person sold this to their child, like me, had I had just sat back and, well, you know, and not done anything, nothing would have happened. So, I urge all the parents that are going through this or who may go through this in the future, do not just not do anything because they're not going to do anything if we don't do anything. They don't care. And if we make them do something, they don't have a choice. Um, But I do think if they do that, there were some sort of like stipulations behind it, some sort of punishment. I applaud your courage. Elijah's uh, looking down on you and saying, go mom, thank you for honoring me. You know, so you should be very proud of that. Thank you very much for reaching out to me, Ashley. Thank you. Okay, uh, you're my hero uh, because this is hard. This is hard for somebody to do because this is fresh every day for now on, it's gonna be fresh for you, right? Every day I relive that day. Every single day is just a reminder like that, you know, my son is gone, everything I do without him now and that was my only child that they took from me but they can't take away your love for him they can't take away the memories and and the courage you have to get accountability and save another mother from going through this yeah. right because yeah. that's what your mission is that's now exactly going forward. what it is and to save these kids because it's a cold world and these people do not care they don't care and the justice system is not set up for this and i don't i don't know if maybe it's just too much for them but i'm going to make them do something they yeah. they don't have a choice at this point again i applaud your courage and i'll, <laughs> I'll, I'll be right there next to you okay because uh, that's something that i can get behind a uh, mother uh, that's grieving and you're literally trying to save other lives out there you know, yeah. and that's that's my mission as well. Let's go talk to people at parents. Let's talk to kids. Just don't do it. Absolutely. Here are the ramifications. Here yes. are the consequences of trying it just one time. Right. Right. Just one. So, uh, Ashley, thank you very much. We're going to stay you. in contact where we'll continue to uh, help each other out. And because uh, we're, we're, we're on the same mission, Definitely. Let's, by joining forces, we'll, we'll get there quicker. OK, absolutely. Thank you, Ashley. Thank you.